I'm deep in the Aperture Forest. I mean, Amazon Forest. And I'm here to talk to you about apertures. Yes. Now, in this class, we're using manual mode. No program, no autofocus. We're using manual mode. And so therefore, you choose the aperture. Now you may ask, what is an aperture? I don't order it at McDonald's. I don't get an aperture latte at Starbucks. What is an aperture? Well, it is the opening to your lens. You choose between 2, 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, 11, 16, 22, 32. You're going to memorize these. And what will happen is depending on which aperture you choose, well, I better keep my voice down, I'm going to move closer. Whatever aperture you choose, it will change the look of your picture. Think of it as if you were a uh, painter and you chose a brush. Either you're going to use a house painting brush or a teeny tiny little sable brush with like four little bristles on it to paint a very pristine, perfect picture. So your apertures are these small to large openings and the smaller the opening, like this, the more depth of field you get. Now this term depth of field is going to be mentioned a lot. What that means is how much is in focus from your lens into the depth of the landscape or whatever you're taking a picture of. And so therefore, by choosing how much is in focus, you get to affect the look of the picture. Now, Ansel Adams, do you all know who that is? He was a nature photographer, famous for photographing Yosemite. Actually made that part come about because of some of that photography actually went to legislation to prove that the nature area was valuable. So Ansel Adams in a way, even though you see his pictures on coffee mugs and calendars, he was actually a political activist. He would hike up with his giant camera and he would started a club called the F64 Club. Now, what F64 means is that if you didn't set the aperture of your camera to the smallest opening, which is F64, you were out of the club. And so, unfortunately in photography, everything is backwards. And so, F64 is the tiniest hole in the opening of your lens not the largest opening. The largest opening, depending on your camera and how expensive your lens is, usually, actually lately, has been more like 5.6. But if you want what's called a fast lens, which has a, quite a large opening, which lets in a lot of light, that would be something like 2, 2.8. You, you pay a lot more for that. So, 2, F2. What would F2 look like in if I was going to make a comparison, it's a large opening in the lens. It looks a lot like this angel food cake, F2. That's the opening to your camera. Now, if I were part of Ansel Adams Club, I might have F64. I might have to get closer. It's a Cheerio. So this would be actually this probably isn't F64. This is more like F22, something you might have on your own camera. And then if I want mid-range, I think it's going to be kind of like this Sprinkles Donut. Can you see it? This would probably be F8. So what do you use these things for? Well, let's take a look at this landscape. Let's say I want to get everything here in focus. Would I use F8, the donut? No. Would I use F2, the angel food cake? I don't think so. I would use the Cheerio. Yes, F22. And what that would do is allow me to have this tree in focus, this little swampy area, and then those trees in the back. In fact, I could stand back there and uh, 
I would be in focus and the tree would be in focus at f22. Now, let's say I just want this tree over here in focus. Then, and I want the background out of focus, then I might choose f8, the sprinkle donut. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. Well, a little bit still. Anyway, so this would allow me to have that whole tree over there. Maybe I should turn over there a little. In focus. Now, let's say I want to come closer. Bear with me. I hope this isn't like the Blair Witch Projects or something. But now, let's say, can you still hear me? Let's say we just want a couple leaves here, sharp. Everything else out of focus. Um, maybe there's a very dangerous bug on one of those leaves. Let me get my lens. Then I might shoot using F2, 2.8. And this would allow me to just focus on one of these leaves and the rest of the background would be totally thrown out of focus. Now a lot of people say, if you use F16 or F22 or F32, you get everything in focus. So why not make everything in focus and keep it on F22 all the time? Well, if you're a painter and you choose different brushes for different effects, then I would definitely not only use F22, I might use F2 to actually cut down my focus from here to back here. And so if I want just a little bit of focus, hi, I'm making a TV show, digital camera TV. Bye. <laughs> so I might um, use F22, or I'm sorry. Okay. I'm so sorry. I got interrupted by some animals. It's really dangerous here. So, back to the Aperture Forest. Um, one thing that I, I think where I left off was that if you had a choice, would you only use F-22? Is that the only one you're gonna use? And my answer is it depends because if you want a picture where everything's in focus like let's say you were taking this landscape for a, a nature magazine and um, and they said get a beautiful landscape then you would use the Cheerio but if you were taking the picture um, that was about there's too many broken sticks in nature and you just want this stick sharp as a tack and you want the rest of the landscape out of focus like too many people are breaking sticks off of trees then you would take that picture with your f2 let me show you the good side your f2 and what that allows you to do why this is a good option is that it lets you point to certain parts in the picture basically isolate certain parts of the picture and in photography pointing to things isolating this stick or isolating this little whatever it is swamp grass um, tells a viewer what's important in your picture so you use this angel food cake to control the viewer and say looky here looky here looky here looky here looky here and so that's the beauty of using a wide open aperture whether it be f2 f2.8 f4 and the reason most point and shoot cameras are usually only have 5.6 and 8 is because they expect that you'll take pictures of groups of people 
So that's the mediocre choice, actually, unless you need it for necessity. And this one is a little more risky, but gives you, a, whoops, see all these broken sticks? Gives you a little more control of where you want the viewer to look. So think about that, F8, F2, F22, and decide why you want to use that aperture. Not that your camera is making you make a choice. So that's my lecture for the day. Oh, this broken stick comes in handy. Whew. Okay, one more thing about the use of small depth of field, our F2, the angel food cake. A lot of people get confused and they think that um, when they use a small depth of field, in other words, a short distance of focus between the lens and your subject matter, that it means that only whatever's in the front part of the camera so whatever's closest to the camera is in focus. Well, that's wrong. The beauty of F2 or any small depth of field, and I'm just using F2 as an example of something very small depth of field. Large opening, remember? Large opening in the camera. And so I think of F2 as a gift. And that gift, it's a small gift, but it might be a diamond ring. And that small gift can either be put close to the camera, which most people think is how you would use a small depth of field. But by just focusing your camera, you can place that little package right here. So your focus might be from here to here and everything else out of focus. Or it's tough terrain out here, but you could put your F2 way back here so it would be in focus just a little bit in front and a little bit behind the angel food cake so in other words depth of field based on how you focus the camera could be anywhere in your picture plane it's literally just the distance and where you place it so keep that in mind when you're shooting is not just for being close to something